Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So United's struggles in this game really came down to their inability to play out of Brentford's aggressive press. Now we could see that after the display against Brighton, Ten Hag knew he had to switch things up in the centre of midfield. But before I go any further, if you need a place where you can keep up to date with the latest transfer news, find all the match stats you need from games across the globe, and watch highlights and stream live football matches, then you need to download the OneFootball app. I use the OneFootball app because it's completely free, and not only do they have stats and transfer news, but they also have videos to watch and articles to read, which is where I get a lot of my ideas for new videos, and as I said before, you can stream live football matches, and watch highlights all on the app. Downloading the OneFootball app will help support the channel as well, so I'll leave it linked in the description below. Against Graham Potter's side, it was Fred who was a deep connector, dropping deep in the build-up phase on the edge of the box, looking to link the play and help United build out from the back, with McTominay retaining a higher position. However, in this game, Ten Hag instead opted for Fred to be the player pushing higher up the pitch and have Christian Eriksen instead dropping into that reduced position. However, Brentford pretty much knew the system and the shape that United were going to go with, which is that 2 3 2 3 shape. And Thomas Frank's side got their setup perfectly in the press. What they did is they didn't advance their wing backs too far forward, so they basically left Shaw and Dalor open on the flanks. And in the centre of the pitch, they would man to man press United with the two strikers and Bremo and Tony pressing Maguire and Lissandro Martinez. And it would be Jensen who would be the player from the midfield three to push on to Eriksen to man to man press him when he dropped deep to help Maguire and Lissandro Martinez. But the problem with United's whole system was it was just too slow and predictable. But you do have to give credit to Brentford as it was their pressing system that really put United in a box when they were looking to play out of the back and it came from their cover pressing and what I mean by cover pressing is instead of just moving to press a player you make sure that you are cutting off the pass in behind you and so when one of the strikers would move from one of the centre backs on their side to press David De Gea they would do so in a way that stopped De Gea being able to play over to that side. That meant that the only real pass on was to Eriksen. It was predictable where he would look to play the ball and this is what happened for the second goal as Jensen's able to to predict that Eriksen's going to look to move the ball out to the right side. He gets there, makes the interception, and then is able to put the ball past David De Gea. And this was a second goal. The first goal did come from David De Gea's mistake. I don't think you can really have a go at the defence for this. Um, they probably could have moved out a bit quicker to close down the shot, but De Gea has to do better there. But even for the uh, second goal, the build-up, De Gea has to be moving the ball a lot quicker. You see as the ball goes back into him, he takes his time, and all that does is allow Brentford to squeeze up to their man, make their press very tight, and that's basically what leads to to United having so many problems. They just moved the ball too slowly. Even when the ball was going out to Maguire a couple of times because Eriksen was able to get some passes out to him. But instead of actually bypassing the press, all United were really doing was moving the responsibility from one player to the other. And with each pass, Brentford were able to squeeze further and further up the pitch and shift over to one side, condensing the space even further. And this is why United really struggled to even play out at all. Even when on occasion, David De Gea was able to clip a ball out to one of the fullbacks, it just seems like United's patterns in possession just really aren't in sync and it takes them two or three seconds to get their head around what they should do next with the ball and it just makes it easy for the opposition side to press especially when Brentford were doing it so efficiently and what Thomas Frank did that was pretty clever I thought was instead of having the wing backs push high up the pitch to start with during the press they would retain a slightly deeper position they would essentially shadow press the two wingers Rashford and Sancho and stop a long pass out to them on the flanks but instead of being positioned behind them they would position themselves in front of the winger which obviously made it easier for them to push out and press the fullbacks when they received the ball. So United ended up 2-0 down within 20 minutes and it literally just came from their inability to play out from the back. Now obviously this is a risky strategy that Ten Hag is going to continue to employ and that's probably the right decision long term. However, he just can't keep selecting players in that back line who just have a complete inability to play out under pressure. Now Eriksen's a very good player, I do like him further up the pitch, especially because of his passing, his ability to break down deep compact sides, even though I do think that his passing in this game was pretty poor, even in the middle of the pitch, but in that register position I just don't think he's used to it. You need someone like Rodri, obviously you can't get someone of his level, but even someone like the Young would have been perfect, the ability to receive the ball, know where the pressure is coming from and swivel out of pressure, or be able to just play quick passes, which Fred McTominay, Eriksen in this game, he did try to play those passes, but it was really coming from De Gea, who just took too long on the ball every time he received it. And it was a hesitancy to play those passes, which were really coming from De Gea and Maguire at the back, that really just allowed Brentford to squeeze up the pitch, and this is why they were able to press United so effectively. And I did make a video a few months back when Ten Hag was initially appointed, where I did outline why I thought David De Gea had to be replaced. Now, a lot of people criticised me in the comments, saying that De Gea was the last person that needs 
needs to be replaced. But I just don't think people understand the tactical side of the game, to be honest. There's a reason why instantly, as soon as Pep Guardiola came in at Manchester City, he got rid of Joe Hart. He brought in Claudio Bravo, but obviously he wasn't good enough as an actual keeper. So the season after, Edison was brought in, and I think everyone would agree that that's been a fantastic signing. The same goes for Alisson at Liverpool. And so even though obviously it's not an option to replace De Gea list they into the transfer window, it definitely has to be something that United look at. And I do think that United's transfer policy is dedicated too much to the fans. We've heard that Arnautovic was reportedly dismissed as a signing because of the backlash that the signing received. And I just don't think United can listen to the fans. As I think this Brentford game just highlighted that David De Gea isn't a Ten Hag goalkeeper. Fred cannot play in the midfield for Ten Hag. Neither can McTominay. Eriksen's not really a Regista, but he had to do in that game and even he struggled. Maguire as well is just guilty of just taking too long on the ball, inviting pressure. And even I thought Diego Dalla was extremely poor in this game. He made a number of passes where he just received the bond of pressure, no composure at all and lost possession quite a few times. McTominay came on the second half and was absolutely terrible, giving the ball away a significant amount of times. It was almost becoming unbearable for me to watch. In possession in the middle third, even when United were 2-0 down, Brentford were able to sit deep in their 5-3-2 shape, but it was just a complete lack of creativity. It's just a lot of sideways passes, no penetrating passes, and you literally just end up with the front four becoming isolated. And the fourth Brentford goal really summed up United's performance to a T. The ball is in the Brentford box and for some reason Harry Maguire is in such an advanced position that he's almost playing as a right back. Meaning that when the ball is cleared down Brentford's left flank, the ball goes straight over his head and Ivan Tony just makes a run into that channel. But even from this position, United should still be able to deal with the threat. Luke Shaw is pretty much level with Mbwemo when the ball is cleared, but for some reason he just never gets goal side. And he seems to only really kick into gear when Mbwemo gets goal side of him, but by then it's too late as Sandro Martinez has already been forced to vacate the space, moving over to close down Ivan Tony. And so when the ball is played across the pitch, Bremo is able to get in front of Luke Shaw and just finish it past De Gea. And when you look back at it, it's almost like a Sunday league goal, it's that bad. Now in possession, United did look a lot better when Bruno Fernandes would occasionally drop deep alongside Eriksen, as usually one of the two Brentford central midfielders behind Jensen, either De Silva or Nordgaard, would refrain from following Fernandes into these deep areas, which did allow him to get on the ball. And it did help United work the ball around Brentford's midfield and get in behind. But even when they did, you see here, Eriksen plays a ball into Fred, but Fred just doesn't have the ability to drive the ball forward into the final third where United can then look to create a chance. The play breaks down and this was a continuous pattern for United throughout the game, whether this was Dalot on the right side, whose passing was absolutely atrocious, simple passes down the right side he just kept giving away, leading to attack after attack breaking down. Even when we saw Shaw invert on the left side, I thought this would create a very good 1v1 situation on the left side for Rashford, but even when the ball was moved out to him, he was very wasteful in these one-on-one -on -one situations, not being decisive enough of his decision making and in the end he would just constantly be getting crowded out when he turned inside for a shot or looked to go down the line on his left. So overall probably the most embarrassing Manchester United performance I've ever witnessed. Most of the problems start and end during the build-up phase. Maguire and De Gea just aren't good enough on the ball to play this style that Ten Hag wants. Fred and McTominay's lack of press resistance and ability to play first-time passes in that register position is forcing Ten Hag to play Eriksen in that role and it's just not the role he was brought in for. But even in the middle third, players like Dalot and Rashford are constantly wasting possession, giving the ball away, their decision making is absolutely terrible. And it just leads to the United attacks breaking down before they even reach Brentford's final third, which leaves players like Jadon Sancho and Ronaldo completely isolated and out of the game. And even though I thought Luke Shaw had an alright game during the first half in possession, he can be a complete liability during certain defensive phases, completely switching off as he did for Brentford's fourth goal. So thank you for watching, I will be doing more analysis videos of any potential signings United do make, as well as the games coming up, including the Liverpool game next Monday, so subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and put your thoughts in the comment section below, and also check out some of my other videos which will be linked in the description as well.